please note that this question does carry on onto the next slide. In fact, we have a lovely eight mark question coming up. This question says that household vinegar contains 4.52% ethanoic acid by volume. Right, a 1.2 gram of impure sample of calcium carbonate is added to 25 centimeters of household vinegar. On completion, the, okay, I'll explain all of this now, but let's just read. On completion, the excess ethanoic acid in the household vinegar is neutralized by sodium hydroxide solution, and here's the equation. Okay, so let me explain to you guys exactly what is happening over here. So we have a container filled up with vinegar. Okay, we've got vinegar. Let me actually put that a little bit, I'm drawing it very low down. Let's actually just draw it like this. So we've got some vinegar over here. Right, household vinegar contains 4.52% ethanoic acid. So inside here, we've got some ethanoic acid. Okay, now what they do is they take some impure calcium carbonate. They take some impure calcium carbonate so I'm just gonna say CaCO3, and that they're gonna take some of that and they're gonna act, react it, or they're gonna put it into, uh, they're gonna put it into this container. Now, we know that this is an acid, this is an acid, and this is a type of base. It's a metal carbonate, which is a base. So obviously, when you add these two things together, they are going to react with each other. Okay, now there are three different ways that acids and bases can react. Well, we have three different scenarios. In scenario one, you are going to add a perfect amount of acid and base. If you add a perfect amount of acid and base, then they will completely neutralize each other, neutralize, and at the end, there will be, um, there will be no acid or base left over, no acid, or base remaining. Okay, scenario two, you add too much acid. So you add um, lots of acid and a very little bit of base. What will happen is that they will react with each other. They will react, but at the end, at the end, you will have some, you will have some acid left over. Okay, then in scenario three, you add a lot of base and a small amount of acid. So at the end, you will have base left over. Okay, so that is things that you need to keep in mind um, with these types of questions, that you are initially gonna react these two together then there will be one of them that is left over. So they tell us actually um, that once the completion, once the reaction is complete, there will be excess acid, okay? So then what they're gonna do, so they're gonna take that acid that is an excess, and they are then gonna go react that excess. They'll take the excess, so let's quickly draw a little picture here. So this would be the excess the excess acid. What they'll do is they will then go and react that with some NaOH. They will then react these two together. Okay, that is how they love to ask these questions, um, well, these types of acid-base reaction questions, is they have a reaction that happens in the beginning, and then one of them has an excess, and then they take that excess and they react it in a second reaction. Okay, and with this last reaction, um, there's usually no leftovers. It's usually a perfect neutralization reaction where they end, where they, they use up all of the acid and the base. Okay, so I hope that that makes sense. I've gone and summarized the entire question, even the next part of the question, I've summarized that. Okay, so otherwise you guys are gonna read this and it's just gonna be overwhelming. So the first question says that, um, and let's actually just fill in some stuff here. They tell us that the excess, or the, sorry, they tell us when they reacted with the NaOH, um, they use that many, that much volume and that much concentration. So 14.5 centimeters and one mole 
per decimeter. So they say calculate the number of moles of the unreacted ethanoic acid. What do they mean by that? They mean the unreacted uh, ethanoic acid over here, which is actually the excess acid, which is the acid that they're going to react over here. So what we could do is we could take this value and this value, and we could work out the moles of NaOH by just using the normal C equals to N over V. But remember that 14,5 centimeters is um, 0, 0,0145 decimeters. So now we can say uh, 1 equals to N over 0 0.0145. And so we could work out the moles as 0 0.0145, and that is for NaOH. But if you look at this reaction now, which is the reaction that's taking place over here. Um, that's not the reaction taking place over here. It's not that one. Um, they, 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 we can see that this reaction is balanced. You can check it for yourself, but it's balanced. And we can see the mole ratio here is one to one. So that means that the number of moles of unreacted ethanoic acid um, would be 0, 0,0145 moles. So that is the answer for 7.2.1. Okay, so I've quickly gone and just made a few drawings um, just to summarize what we had so far. So here we had the impure calcium carbonate, which they added to this vinegar. And then when they had the excess vinegar, they reacted that with NaOH. Okay, and that's what we did in the previous part of this question. And we found out that there was um, 0 0.0145 mole of vinegar um, over there. Now, let's have a look here. They say in question 7.2.2, calcium carbonate, which is this one, reacts with ethanoic acid, which is inside here. Remember, it's inside the vinegar, um, according to this reaction. Okay, so now they're giving us a new reaction over here, and that's this one, right? Uh, this reaction up here, that was what we looked at earlier, which, which was in that container over there. It says, for eight marks, calculate the percentage of calcium carbonate in the impure sample. Because remember the, the calcium carbonate given in the impure sample, uh, it's not pure, right? So it, it it's the 1.2 grams is not only calcium carbonate. Maybe, maybe one gram is calcium carbonate and the other 0 0.2 grams is impurities, but we don't know that just yet. So it says calculate the percentage of calcium carbonate if one centimeter cube of household vinegar has a mass of one gram. So what we can do is the following. They're telling us that one centimeter cube has a mass of one gram of, uh, for household vinegar. So in the beginning, our vinegar was 25 centimeter cube. So we can say that 25 centimeter cube would then have a mass of 25 grams because they told us that one centimeter cube has a mass of one gram. Now, 4.52% out of that, or out of this one, because they said by volume, and this is volume, 4.52% is ethanoic acid. So maybe I should have done that first. Maybe I should say 4.52% multiplied by 25 equals 1.13 centimeter cube. So that would be, that would be, um, that would be ethanoic acid. That's ethanoic acid, right? Because uh, they said it's 4.52% out of the 25. Then we can say that um, 1.13 centimeter cube is the same as 1.13 grams because they said that one centimeter cube is the same as one gram. So uh, therefore we have 1.13 grams of uh, ethanoic acid. That's how much ethanoic acid we had over here, not over here, over here, okay? So what we can then do, so we can say 1.13 gram of ethanoic acid. So what we could then do is we can work out how many moles that would be. So we could work out the moles of ethanoic acid by just using the M over capital M formula. And so that's gonna be 1.13 over, now we can say 12, plus three, because there's three hydrogens. Actually, there's four hydrogens. So actually, we'll just say four. Uh, plus another carbon, plus two 
oxygens, which would then be 16 plus 16, which is 32. And so what you should find is that 1.13 over 60. Now we're not gonna round this number off because it's not the final answer. So I'm gonna say 0, 0.0, uh, let's write it over here. 0 0.018833, and that would be mole of ethanoic acid. And that was, that was over here, that's over here. So think about this, guys. Think about this. The amount of mole of ethanoic acid in the beginning is this much. Okay? How much ethanoic acid did we use in the excess? How much excess ethanoic acid was there? Well, there was this many moles. So then my question to you then is how many moles of ethanoic acid did we actually use up in this reaction when it reacted with the calcium carbonate? Does that make sense? Ooh, what happened there? Whoops, sorry about that. Um, so does that, I hope that makes sense. Let me just try explain that again. In the very beginning, before any reactions took place, we had this much ethanoic acid, which is the same as 0 0.01883 moles. That's how much ethanoic acid we had in the very beginning, okay? Then we reacted some of that ethanoic acid with the calcium carbonate, right? And some of the ethanoic acid reacted, but some of it was excess. And the excess was this amount over here. So this amount over here is the amount of excess vinegar or ethanoic acid that we took over into this reaction over here. So then if I draw a little box maybe, we have... Um, we have 0 0.018833 ethanoic acid in the beginning. That's moles. Then the excess was 0 0.0145. So then the question is, how much did we use in the first part, in this part over here? Well, well done if you realize that we can simply minus these two values over here. So then we can say here that the mole of ethanoic acid used in the reaction with the calcium carbonate would then be 0, 0, 0.018833 minus 0 0.0145 and that would give 4,333 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So that is how much ethanoic acid we used in this reaction. So what we can now do is we can look at the mole ratio between these two and that can allow us now to work out how much calcium carbonate moles there must have been. So their ratio is 1 is to 2. So if we have 4.333 times 10 to the minus 3 over here, then we can divide by 2 to work out the moles of calcium carbonate. So the moles of calcium carbonate would be 4.333 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2. And that gives us 2.1665 times 10 to the minus 3. So that is how many moles of calcium carbonate we have inside this container. So now what we can do is we can take that number of moles of calcium carbonate and we can see what mass would that be by using just the normal N equals to M over capital M formula. And so we can say 2.1665 times 10 to the minus 3 equals to the mass, which we don't know. Kevin, I thought the mass of calcium carbonate is 1.2. No, it's not. Remember, that 1.2 is the total mass of everything we put inside here but that's not only calcium carbonate. Some of it could be other things because it is impure. If you then go get the mass of calcium carbonate on the periodic table, you should get 100. And so if you had to then go work out the mass of calcium carbonate, you should get 0, comma, sorry, 0, 0,21665 grams. So in the beginning, they gave you a 1.2 gram tablet but only 0 0.21665 grams was actually calcium carbonate. 
So now we can work out the percentage purity of that calcium carbonate by taking the mass of the pure divided by the mass of the impure. And so that's going to be 0 0.21665 over 1, 1,2. And then, of course, we should always multiply that with 100 because we want the percentage, right? And so if you had to go work that out, you should get an answer of 18,05%. Now, I know I said the answer was 18,08, but that's just what I took off the memo. But according to, or because of rounding off and all of that stuff, your answer is allowed to be anywhere between that. Okay, so 18.05% is absolutely fine. So this, in my opinion, is a brilliant question. If you found out or found that it was a bit difficult and you couldn't get it, please try it again and watch it from the beginning and try to make sense of it. You will get something like this or there's a very high chance that you could get something like this. It's a brilliant question.